and Nelson Kofiakotia, and then also uh, Moses also joining us as well. Please make sure you share the stream. Let's have some great conversations. As always, we're going to have uh, sports later on, and then we'll bring you Community Manifesto. Today, uh, we're coming to you from the Suhum constituency, where uh, we went to have some great interactions so far. <laughs> it seems to be a very hot place, I have to tell you. You have to wait for it, um, for some great conversations in there. But wherever you're watching us from, um, Shadai Adote, thank you very much. Um, Ivan Sebin Samba, please may you share the stream. More importantly, join us also as we tell you that we have Cash Out Goes with a short code, star 439 hash. And poignantly, what you need to do is to make sure you choose option two and uh, you increase the number of tickets that you have and let's have some great conversation as it is. Let me just uh, quickly tell you what we'll be discussing this morning. Uh, the NDC seems to be adamant that they want to go on the street and demonstrate against the Electoral Commission. And that independent body has uh, specifically pointed out to the NDC that there are concerns they are raising about discrepancies following the registration of the individuals who uh, they say also have uh, their names transferred sometimes with their other permission, et cetera, and then also other discrepancies they've noticed are being taken care of. That's a position of the Electoral Commission. So why the NDC wants to continue with this, a uh, day two of this, so we want to ask them these specific questions. And then also look at the other stakeholders as well. Do they agree that this should be the way, or do we need a truce beyond just having a demonstration? I have Yao Bwabing Asamwa, um, he is with the Movement for Change and the Alliance, and uh, good morning to you, Raya Bwabinga Samu. How are you as well? Very well. Good morning, sir. Okay. Thank you for joining us. We're grateful. It's a pleasure. Well attired in the colors of the Movement for Change. Thank you. All right. Uh, Kwesi Kwating usually will be a regular. Uh, I haven't seen him in a while, but he's been busy uh, doing not only work for the Ministry of Education, but also um, looking at how he can also help uh, Dr. Mahmoud Dubamia DM it as possible 2024 to uh, get power by December 7, 2024 as well. Kwesi Kwating, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, mm. Roland, and good morning to good you. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you too? Yeah. And because you're the ministry, I'll have to say, have you shared all the laptops now? Yeah, so far we are done. Uh, the one for the teachers mm. is done. I think currently what is going on is the one student, one tablet. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And then also, uh, after this, we'll have an interview on uh, with the news team, whether the tablets were you free. But it's not up for discussion, so yeah, sure, we'll, we'll sure, shelve sure, that. Sure. And then also, Director for Legal Affairs of the NDC. They've been advising the leadership that they should go on this demonstration. I do Jitamaklo. is a legal practitioner as well. And good morning to you. How are you? And, Roland, uh, how's uh, been yeah. your weekend? My weekend has been very good. Good morning to my brother here. Good morning to Malene Senior. I quickly on this, you know, over the weekend, uh, I saw a video of uh, Matthew Poku Prempe in his usual reckless posturing, telling the people in Ashanti that a vote for the NDC, he used the word Omambofu, meaning their nation records. I have never seen a reckless human being. I only greeted like, you. Look, like Matthew Poku Prempe. I now understand why your boss was not at the place when he was inaugurated. Who's his boss? Uh, uh, Educhum. The day, uh, 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 what's the name, Dr. Baumia put him out. Educhum was not there because he could not endorse this reckless character of a running mate. The NDC had been so good to the people of Ashanti, and the Ashantis have reciprocated uh, 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 by voting massively for the NDC. I would encourage the people of Ashanti that when they look back and they see the Kijetia market, they should always remember that it was not done in eight years. It was done in just four years. That is what leadership means. Uh, do you tell a me, reckless um, person. I just greeted you. I think it's, and it's only fair to also respond responding. to such greetings, even though, I mean, I have responded to mm, say already. Mm. I, I believe that, I mean, Noya Tamaklo should raise the conversation. And this is not an opportunity to pitch leadership among themselves. Uh, Dr. Duke Chum's inability to go for his inauguration. Ah, uh, he didn't go. I you didn't monitor. I okay. didn't, he I'm didn't go. Like no, I didn't. You, that's, that's why I'm here. Okay, okay. okay. So, Dr. Duke apparently was not in the country okay. then. So, it made sense that he couldn't go. But what is most important is that we had a very clear process for selecting a running mate. And that process, the power rested on the 
I mean, pre the presidential candidate, Dr. Mahamadou Baumia, mm. after he has selected Dr. Poku Prempe, all of us, including my boss, supports his choice. And we are all willing to campaign for him to become the next president and, of course, the vice president accordingly. That is, I mean, the beauty of the MPP. So uh, I don't think it is right for lawyer Tamaklu to sit here and try to pitch one, uh, I mean, leader against Was he not the same person who said yes, I think he's clarified that. He's clarified. Let me say good morning to uh, Dr. Yahweh Duchum. Uh, please. Yahweh uh, yeah, Samoa legal practitioner, is also here. And uh, let's all be... Um, Let's respect each other's space so that he also doesn't. Okay, so now let's take you through a number of things that have uh, already been noticed. And you'll find that earlier, there had been concerns raised about um, facilities or biometric information capturing machines that had gotten missing from the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission said it was not true. And subsequently, they came and said they were just um, laptops or so to speak subsequently also then we found out that there have been public reports of an individual for example who had specifically a bvd on him i mean that person was just in town and these facilities are supposed to be in the custody of the electoral commission ghana's electoral commission after vehemently denying that that was not the case you find these facilities that have been used to capture people's bio data, individuals who are supposed to be having their names on the register. And these machines now in the hands of people, whether they are miscreants, etc. Apart from this person, we don't know the whereabouts of all those. So we'll be sh we're showing you some of these um, stolen bio. Okay, so you'll find that, okay, so for example, this is a property of the Electoral Commission. Then you go, the individual is captured. Now, the question then is, following these discrepancies that have been noti noticed with the register, where you have duplication of names, names transferred, not even to nearby polling stations, and then subsequently also, to polling stations that are even far off, no proximity thereof. Now, what does it mean? So I'm going to give, give you responses um, of the Electoral Commission on this as well, and they've been having their representative on key points on Saturday, etc. Where we are currently is that a demonstration so-called is supposed to be undertaken. Should we be having that? Shouldn't the NDC be sitting with the Electoral Commission? and having other stakeholders also on board, or should the EC accede to the demands of the NDC? And, um, well, so this is where we are currently. Eduji, so why would you want to still continue with this demonstration? It's been, the notification being given a couple of days now, and just a day to this demonstration, it looks like the key stakeholders are saying that, well, this, the audit is needed, but also, a demonstration could be avoided, Adujay. Okay, so you see, <clears throat> if you look at the 1992 Constitution, it has essentially three underlining principles. One, probity. Two, accountability. Three, transparency. Now, the Electoral Commission, being a creature of the Constitution, must subject its activities to these constitutional principles. Nothing more, nothing else. I have heard people say that the Electoral Commission by law is independent. The Electoral Commission is not independent from transparency, accountability, and probity. Now the NDC, having carefully examined the voters register, came out with five heads of discrepancies now, first of all, the NDC wrote to the Electoral Commission requesting for a meeting and to demonstrate that our request is not frivolous or vexatious. What we did was to further request that the whole process should have the media present. So we requested for additional live coverage of the event. Now, my understanding is that 
The media, being the fourth estate of the realm, will be permitted to broker the whole thing to Ghanaians. So that if the claims by the NDC were not proper, the whole Ghana will see the NDC for whatever it's worth. Strangely, strangely, the Electoral Commission rejected the media presence. And strangely, the media never raised an issue about it. But that's another Isn't matter. Is the purview of the Electoral Commission no, you see, to either again, have a live no, coverage? No, 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 no. Again, I talked about the issues of transparency. The Electoral Commission itself has one of its claims that it wants to have a transparent election. And we ask you that allow the media presence no. Then we went there. During the questioning, it became obvious by the skill set and the IT expert that we took there that there were huge discrepancies with the register. And I'll give you a classic example. When we raised the issue of Tamale Central, 25 people having their voters' identities and everything transferred to Pusiga, hmm? listen carefully, to Pusiga without their consent, the Electoral Commission found merit in that claim and proceeded to suspend its own district director there. Now the question is, if it is possible for 25 people to have their voter identity records transferred from one constituency in northern region to another one in Upper East, it tells you the extent to which the IT system of the Electoral Commission can be subject to or the whatever. And we have also identified hmm, that over 15,000 people have had their identities and others, either one way or the other, compromised. Over 200,000 people having issues with their voter identities. When we raise these things, issues to the Electoral Commission, they in fact admitted that yes, there may be issues. However, the Electoral Commission comes to tell us that they have internally resolved the problem. Now my question is, how do you tell whether these issues have in fact been resolved? So what have we demanded from the EC? A simple request for audit. So that's why you have to hit the streets? I'm coming there. A simple request for audit. When we made this request for audit, instead of the electoral commission, how much will it cost you to do this audit? How many days will it take you to do, to do this audit? In fact, this past week that we've been going back and forth would have been done with the audit. And I say this. In 2015, the MPP came out with a claim that there were 75,000 Togolese on the voters' register. You recall Dr. Mahmoud Bahamia. So we said, ah, if you know the 75,000 people who are Togolese, produce the name so that we could have the names deleted when they are Togolese. He said no. Then they now started a call for a new voters' register on the basis of that 75,000 they claim to be Togolese on the register. When that claim came, J uh, Charlotte said, you know what she did? She set up a five-member eminent committee chaired by the respected and distinguished jurist, Azukrab, and Justice VCRC uh, Crab. So they went through all that process and produced a report. What the report indicated was that one, the claim for a new voter's register was not convincing. However, the demand for an audit was proper. And so, Madame Charlotte said, permitted all stakeholders to help in auditing the voter's register. That brought Akufado to power. The request the NDC is making today is no different. The only problem is that you have a situation where the current electoral commission and the commissioners do not see 
the, the security of tenor provided them by the constitution, they rather see that they can only remain in office as commissioners with an MPP government. You know why? Why? Why do you draw that conclusion? Good. If you do state that they have a security of tenor. Exactly. So I Are you a lawyer? Yes. Because Akufuado did something that nobody had done before. In fact, at the bar conference, the bar, the outgoing bar president, my senior Yabuafo, made a, an interest. He said, look, it is only Afarijan who one day is an MPP, tomorrow he's NDC, and that is how we have been going with Afarijan until you went on retirement. But Akufuado did the unthinkable in removing Salotose. And when Akufuado removed Salotose, it became a message to the current commissioners that the Constitution's guarantee of security of tenor is not enough. All you need is a reckless president and you are gone. And so because of that, the current crop of commissioners believe that as long as MPP is in power, that is what provides them security of tenor and not the Constitution. And you know something, I, I will conclude on this, just 30 seconds. It's not far-fetched. No. If you have a situation where, if you have a situation what where. What you are saying is not far-fetched. Far I'll tell you. If you have a situation where Madame Jane Mensa, okay, recruit two IT consultants. One, Dr. Yao Ofori Eji. Two, Yao Kwachi. And like I pointed out, Yao Kwachi is the son of Amfo Kwachi. Amfo Kwachi was the personal assistant of Mr. Akufuado. Now listen, these are people who have access to the Electoral Commission database. We do not know what the login protocols are. How you can enter, how you can exit, how you do it. And look, this is a very crucial election. <laughs> An election where destinies will be determined. And you have a known MPP person handling the IT infrastructure beyond Apiahine, who myself and other NDC communicators have debated on platform like this today. I'm with this man. He's an MPP communication member. Tomorrow I wake up and he's an electoral commissioner. And you say that I should be comfortable. I should go and sleep because he's Angel Gabriel, a woo. And I want to use this platform to urge all Ghanaians, urge all Ghanaians, that tomorrow, let us all come in our You still numbers. want to go ahead with the demonstration? Have you heard Professor Kofi Abuchi, the dean of the faculty or the law school of UPSA, the point he makes? He said, listen, what is wrong? How, what harm will it cause EC if you audit the process? Okay. What harm? The Electoral Commission has not been able to provide mm. any justification for refusing. Okay. Mr. Bobby Asame, what, what do you make of this, especially with your experiences having monitored elections? I, and I keep saying that the first time um, I started interacting with you from the year 2000, mm -hmm. I mean, you used to be a transparency and governance expert as well. You've gone through the mill being a mainstream politician. So your experiences come in handy with this. I mean, it's hitting the streets, not far-fetched. Roland, thank you very much, and uh, a very good morning to your viewers. At the heart of the rising tension associated with every election mm. is a winner-takes-all system. You lose an election, it means for eight years, you and your like, your party, are out. Those who win take everything for themselves. And that means that a half or a part, a large part of the society is disadvantaged for eight years, and therefore, it's a zero-sum game. Either you win or you lose. So that exclusion makes every election in this country a high-stakes one. So it's no wonder that though the NDC has legitimate claims. They do have legitimate claims? Oh, of course, if you have claims, proven claims that there are issues with the register, it's legitimate. <laughs> but the question is whether or not they need to dramatize it to that extent. You think they're dramatizing? But it is not only about the NDC dramatization. It is also about the EC's approach to resolution of such issues. Because what I see so far is an arm's length public opinion approach. Press conference saying 
uh, uh, to respond to the issues. But the EC, I'm sure by now, should realize that it's not only about the NDC. And it's not only about the NDC and MPP relationship. It is also about other political organizations, entities and institutions, and the people of Ghana, who really <laughs> are fed up with the musical chairs of MPP and DC, uh, you know, fighting over who is the worst. I, I was the most corrupt. No, I was the least corrupt. I, I, I destroyed the water the most. No, I destroyed the water the least. Not I provided the solutions. So the EC, nothing, and I believe nothing, will hurt the EC if it adopts a more open approach. Instead of the you know, arm's length responses through the media and all that. You, you, if, if you open up and engage not only the NDC, but other stakeholders involved in this election, what you are doing is that you are building confidence. You are building confidence in a way that makes you stand out amongst mm. the people. Mm. The people get to accept. Because, of course, all that posturing going on impacts the people. It's designed to create the impression that the people should entrust you. It's designed to create the impression that the people's vote will not count because whatever mechanisms are going on are to undermine the real intentions of the people, which is to vote a particular party into power. It's an impression that's created with the drama and all that. You, you understand? It's part of the insurance that if I lose or I win, then I did it on my own merit and the EC it was not the factor. Or rather, if I lose, the EC must have been the factor why I lost. So it is important, it is important that the EC moves beyond its authority. I'm not under anybody's control. I have the power to do what I need to do. And therefore, as I'm doing it, it's acceptable to everybody and everybody must go on. This posture was changed when IPAC came into being. And, and now Afarijan all of a sudden is the saint everybody's mentioning. He's had his days, very, very difficult and hot days, Kanga and the others. But they managed to put in IPAC, which moderated the noises a bit. Now IPAC virtually is not a, a stress, it's not living up to the stress of managing the situation anymore. So you need a new approach, including IPAC, of course, new mechanisms. And I believe that the EC must take on board the need to deal with the political entities, NDC included, MPP included, everybody included, in a manner that builds confidence. So now, question, what is an audit? The NDC is going on strike because uh, they are going on demonstration, which is their constitutional right, because they say they demand an audit. The AC feels that they don't have to give you anything you demand because it's within their right not to give it to you. But in truth, from the approach I'm suggesting, all you need to find out is the parameters of that audit. Because it is true, you have met them and you have agreed that there are issues with the register. And visibly, there are issues with the register. You've displayed some of those issues here. Uh, it, it's come up that names have been mistransferred, there's duplication, and that the exhibition the exhibition exercise was not enough of a stress test. And that post the exhibition, people are not assured that the changes they expect from the exhibition have been effected satisfactorily. Okay? So in order to bring all this to closure and calm nerves, what stops the EC from sitting down with the NDC and establishing the ambit of whatever the audit so-called means? Because I don't believe this audit means go and bring in uh, an accounting firm, or I don't think that's the way to go. Then how, how, how if, should it be done? Looking at the mind, posture of the EC over the period for which perhaps you can gauge whether there is trust for it or not yes. in the run-up to this election. In my mind, I think an audit would be one where the EC sits with all the major stakeholders, especially the candidates for the election, not the political parties only, but the independent candidates, as well as the media. And then they go through, they go through what the NDC has presented and stress test it against their master list. In the open, it doesn't spoil anything. It doesn't spoil anything because the NDC say they found 243,000 numbers bloated. 
uh, and some other figures, all adding up to about, uh, say, 300,000 max of, of disputes. But in this country, elections have been won with less than 40,000 presidential elections. If you remember uh, 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 President Mills late mm. and Nanado, mm. elections have been won with less. Some MPs have won elections by three votes, one vote. So every vote matters in the 50 plus one calculation. So if a party is disputing the validity of 300,000 votes well before you conclude the register process, nothing stops you from calling them up and engaging them. If you believe and accept that your systems are that resilient, then build confidence. Bring them on board. Are you the movement for change? Yes. Do you, as a position, take it that the concerns that have been raised also seem to sync with what your teams, members, and then officers have picked on the ground? But you see, that's the interesting thing. We even have more uh, to, to uh, how do I say, the angst should be higher on our side. Why? Uh, because you're not even recognized by the Electoral Commission system until and unless your nomination as an independent is accepted. By which time, it may be too late to even put in place a mechanism. So yes. you're not giving any forum no, so at all to air your grievances apart you, from you, this? You, even if you step into IPAC, you don't have a voice. This is change, shouldn't you it? Can, you can only vote. That's why I'm saying that the Electoral Commission, is, this is a time for confidence building. This is not a time for sitting in the old situation that you were in before, where you'd assume that your powers are sacrosanct, your powers are given. Because even where your powers are given, you are using those powers on behalf of other people. And you must build the confidence of those people in the way and manner you are using those powers. So you have an independent, you are not, you don't have a voice in IPAC, you are not recognized, you don't give any documentation, you don't get any documentation from the EC until and after the EC accepts your nomination as a presidential candidate. That is when officially the EC starts dealing with you. By which time, you are virtually uh, uh, sitting on top of the elections. You are on your way to an election. At what point do you then protest or otherwise? Okay. So I'm saying that it is time, it's an opportune time for this EC to do what everybody in the process, all stakeholders will want. That is not to say that they are doing something fundamentally wrong. I don't think so. But definitely, if a major stakeholder and other entities have found issues with the process, particularly the register, it's only fair that they sit down with them in public. I don't believe the approach of uh, uh, answering, responding by press conferences, giving their side of the story by press conferences, and the NDC going out in the streets to also state their story, and, and also having a media. A court of public opinion approach will not solve the problem. So, EC, sit down with everybody. It won't take a day. With the kinds of systems that are available today, software that can run a comparison quickly, it won't take a day to resolve a difference about 300,000 names on the register. And to, be the benefit, to the benefit of all, it will reduce the tension, it will remove the incentive to drama, and it will take away the fear associated with elections. Mm. Uh, these concerns of uh, Kwesi Kwating, do, do, they, do they also sync with what the MPP seems to be finding? Because it looks like uh, there seems to be the, the support of the EC <laughs> coming from the MPP on the subject? Ah, well, uh, thank you, Roland. I mean, it becomes quite um, comfortable and let me say complex when it's almost become a perennial thing, particularly when uh, the tables turn and one party will have to assume the spokesperson of the Electoral Commission, where the other party would then have to assume, I mean, a strong opposition against the electoral commission uh, because if you look at our register as i mean it's being designed we must understand that our register has never been devoid of discrepancies it is even the more reason why the constitutional instrument that established the register mm. or established even the electoral commission and gave them the mandate to be able to collate the register actually gives room and make provisions for 
the resolution of same, particularly when such discrepancies are identified. And so some of these processes involve the exhibition itself. And I've always maintained that the exhibition as a process is service and auditing process. I mean, I, I have always maintained that there is no proper auditing than exposing your register to the 70 million Ghanaians to come and say that, well, this is my name, this is not my name, this person died, this person died. You're saying that's died. a better means to audit? If you ask me. It's the same thing President Mahama said in 2016 or 15. I remember vividly. Yes, I have it here. And Do you have it? Let me yes, see. Yes, I'm surprised. Poor. Mahama is here. I'm going to share with you. Okay. Voters register. State your case and let the Electoral Commission decide. Mm. Mahama tells who, who, said that? who said that? Because I think I've, I've come across yes. it. So that's, uh, let me see whether I can send it to the team. Joinonline.com uh, on the 8th of October 2015. You can mm. have a copy. Mm. So, um, I think I, I, I do have a copy. And, and it even goes beyond that. Because there are also, if you listen to on the August 1st, 2015, this is Mr. Fusampo, then chairman of the NDC. Mm. MPP calls for audit of register upset. That is the description then by the chairman of the of the NDC. Again, Mr. Esiedun Ketia, if you believe EC has lost credibility, you have a problem. So I am saying that this whole posturing of political leadership and political parties actually changes depending on which side of the pendulum that they are. Mm. So, it's so just, it is uh, normal, eh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I agree with Senior Wabian Samo when he said that, uh, of course, they may have some legitimate concerns, particularly when even the Electoral Commission itself has admitted to seem that there are discrepancies. But the dramatization, and of course, gathering all Ghanaians to, to go and demonstrate, especially when, as at now, you've not been able to even convince Ghanaians about your 24-hour economy, for me, is problematic. But I maintain that if you look at the exhibition process, I am saying that the exhibition process itself is a form of auditing. And we expect that at this moment, some way, somehow, the NDC should have been able to collate all the discrepancies and give to the EC for same to be remedied. As of now, if you read the press conference and the press statement by the Electoral Commission, I can give you a copy. They said that as of now, the NDC has not been able to provide a single evidence to support their claim. But of course, I mean, it does not also negate the fact that their claims may be relevant or not. What I'm saying is... You mean they haven't formally presented it to the Electoral Commission? Yes. They gave samples? No. I mean, this is what the Electoral Commission is saying. I don't speak for the Electoral Commission unless, of course, you are saying that the Electoral Commission is not being truthful to us. But, you see, I am saying that the law itself that established the Electoral Commission has given the Electoral Commission the mandate to be able to resolve some of these discrepancies and, uh, uh, how do you call it, internally. It is even the more reason why, after a provisional register is exhibited, the EC have to go back to their <laughs> drawing board, check the discrepancies and the inconsistencies, and then come out with the final register. So I feel that, I mean, the NDC should just wait for the Electoral Commission to present us with the final Quasi, register. Quasi wait. Before, okay, okay, well, wait. OK. Uh, as you continue, I, I think now what is agreeable is that there's this perennial perception, if you're in opposition, that the EC is, un, uh, is distrusted or untrustable. Now, let's look at what the former president did say in response to what the MPP had been raising 2015, 2016. And um, you clearly, so. He says, voters register, state your case, and let EC decide. Mahama tells critics. And this was in 2015. Yeah. Now, when you go also, you find that um, Shadrach, I, I shared a video of uh, Samir Uku as well, play that one. And thereafter, they've been, let my vote count. Subsequently, also, then we'll come to the present. Because it looks like I agree with Yabwabiya Samwa. He's gone through all the processes of being a gather of or custodian of transparency and governance, being a, a politician, a political player, and now on the side of the opposition. And so you find that there's the trend. If there's any communication curve, how it's undulating, you will find it as movement for change. Yo, Seeking to bring permanent change. Yo, so let's so let's get Samir Uko's video as well. Across the ten regions. And it's beginning to up the tension in the system. The Christian Council of Ghana should not sit down and only be interested in people signing peace accord. When those held and gifted with their responsibility to ensure a free, fair, transparent elections are derelicting on their duties. Peace accords on paper on itself cannot provide us with a transparent election. 
What is sad for us in the MPP youth wing is what has been lost in the narrative. There's this whole peace industry in Ghana. Peace industry. But nobody is talking about the fairness, the transparency. It's not enough for the electoral commissioner to go to church and say she's praying God gives us a leader. When some of the posture and utterances of the EC seem to suggest that they have a favorite in the election. When the electoral commissioner can say that when the election is becoming too close, I'll call for a count. My goodness. You are a referee. You are not a player. And sometimes the electoral commission behaves like a, like, like, like a team protesting against an unqualified player. <laughs> when you are supposed to be the referee in the game, it's when I'm contesting my brother here, and I am aggrieved with the results, and I'll call for a recount. These things cannot pass without the Peace Council, the Christian Council, our Muslim Council and mission to not comment on it. Elections is not an event, it's a process. From the process one to the process two to the process three to the process four, all of it must engender confidence. And thereafter, a number of actions were taken. I don't know whether you, you took part in those as a monster. We covered it extensively. Yeah. Uh, Gabi Otridakun, yeah. there's somebody who lost their eye. Yeah. They were great. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's passed now, yeah. etc. Yeah. And Samir Uku does capture it appropriately, or yeah. did capture it appropriately. Yeah. Then he was a youth leader yeah. of, of the... the youth, of, that's how you talk about yeah, that. Certainly. Yes. And he says, I think it's very important, the statement he made. Yeah. The election is not an event, it's a process. Yes. And this one, again, we've had the processes of discrepancies being noticed, machines that are used to capture biometric data getting missing, the Electoral Commission on one hand organizing press conferences in response, then the machines that were supposed to be laptops truly then becomes the biometric devices, and subsequently the registration is undertaken, you find some of these discrepancies, and these are now at the table. The Electoral Commission again org organizes a series of press conferences, and indeed, I'm told by our reporters, after the speech of the Electoral Commission representatives, the media is not allowed to ask counter questions as well, which usually should be symptomatic of press conferences. And now we've come to the point where the NDC now wants to hit the street. You are saying that well, exhibition should be the way for an audit. So, um, what should ideally be the position now? Because even um, from inside, now being outside, Yabu Abin says that it's also not going to favor his party because as an independent body or entity being the stakeholder, they are outside any remit to uh, seek remedies. Roland. Yes, sir. My, my point is that, yeah. you see, the register is not correlated by, for instance, robots. I mean, to put it in a very proper context, it's fraught with human interface. And everything that you have human interface, certainly you may have discrepancies. It is even more, the more reason why the constitutional instrument that gave the mandate to the Electoral Commission envisaged that some of these discrepancies could arise. And also gave some remedies to be able to profess by the Electoral Commission when some of these discrepancies arise. And so if you look at the constitutional instrument that established the EC, it gives the EC powers to include omitted names. It also gives EC the powers that when they are objecting to names or unqualified names, EC has to expand it. Removal of names of diseased voters from the register, replacement of poor quality or damaged voter ID cards, correction of wrong or uh, spelling of names, and correction to wrong registration center codes. So I am saying that... So you agree with the Electoral Commission today? No, I am saying that... Ultimate, Same things were said oh, Roland, before. If I, if I, if I, if Please I, go, if ahead, I go, ahead, to, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. To, my point is that mm. the, the CIA itself envisaged some of these discrepancies could arise and has given a, a, a mechanism for addressing SIM. That's, that's the point I'm making. But even beyond that, even beyond that, if you go beyond, for instance, the exhibition itself being an auditing process, you also have to understand that the EC has an internal and robust system to be able to address some of these anomalies, granted that even granted without even admitting that admitting the same message. Because Roland, if you look at the Electoral Commission and their processes, you realize that there is also a biometric uh, verification device. You see, let's even admit that there are 10,000 duplication of names. That 10,000 duplication of names can only be present within the register. 
by for the purpose of voting, you will not be able to cross the protocols just because of the introduction of the biometric ver verification devices. So the point is that ultimately there are there exists within the electoral commission protocol a robust system which include the ver verification system or the biometric verification devices that is also be able to more or less censor some of these discrepancies even if same exists. So I am only making is a it, is it now interlinked? Come again. Uh, the registers now across country. Mm -hmm. So you are saying that if something is duplicated, it will not allow you to vote. Assuming you are voting it is in not. Accra. It's not networked. Is, is it networked so that if you are voting in WA, it will expose you? Mr. Kwatin, you remember, <laughs> during, <laughs> will it you? during the registration, uh -huh. the letter commission I was coming system, to answer him. I think you are going to repeat the same question, right? No. Even worked, okay, to add to it, even yeah. worked offline. Yeah. No, I, uh, no, the point is that, are you suggesting that today, if you are biometrically verified in Iowa so West, for instance, then you move to Asante region, you will be able to also buy, uh, vote. We don't know. No, that's why the EC must come no, and no, assure it doesn't, us. It doesn't. It doesn't we, happen. You cannot. Why you the cannot. EC must no, no, us. but you you understand the system of biometric verification. That if you are biometrically verified, I mean, even for instance, with these uh, visa applications and, and whatever, if you are biometric biometrically verified, for instance, for US visa application. There is no way that if you provide a different information, people in Canada will not be able to verify. That is why the, this, this oh, misunderstanding, no, that's why I, we are here I, today. I, I, yeah. allowed, Please allow him to make to his land. point. So that no, I am saying that, I am saying that, mm. first of all, mm. I think I, I came from somewhere, that the exhibition process... Where did you come from? No, uh, the exhibition process itself provides for a mechanism of auditing. And that's why I maintain that there is no proper auditing than giving the power to over 17 million Ghanaians to be able to audit. Mm. But even beyond that, Granted, without even admitting that such discrepancies exist, of which even the Electoral Commission itself has internal mechanisms to be able to resolve it, there also exists a robust system through the verification uh, model, where ultimately one person is unable to even vote twice due to the biometric verification. Of course, unless, of course, you are making a claim that the BVD devices do not work and there exists such no protocol, then from that logic, we should be even doing away with the BVDs. They have a specific role to play. And I'm saying that that role or that system itself is so robust to be able to make sure that uh, some of these concerns that has been raised by the NDC is really remedied. And I am also adding to the point that, yes, the purpose of the auditing is already being fixed. Because ultimately, what is the purpose of the auditing? The purpose of the auditing is to be able to uh, come out with some of these discrepancies so that the Electoral Commission will still be the body to be resolve it. And that is what has been done. It is through the same exhibition or the public auditing that brought out some of these discrepancies that the NDC is saying. And I'm saying that at this moment, we can only wait for the Electoral Commission to be able to address them before the NDC can lay a claim whether or not their concerns have been heard. It is also important to also mention that as of now, I mean, from the Electoral Commission, the NDC has not been able to present even a single evidence to the uh, Electoral Commission based on the claim that they've made. They uh, gave samples. No, this is the EC statement. Unless, yeah, but they no, gave samples. No, no, I, no, I, 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 I am, I am, I am, I am. No, no, no. But you spent all the time on him. For no. me, that's that the problem. That's 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 I, I have, I have been interjected by all, all of you. Wrap, wrap of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am wrapping up with this. You see, uh, uh, my point is that you cannot uh, approbate and reprobate in the NDC's own backyard. I mean, this is Mr. Dufour's uh, letter to the press when he pulled out from the NDC presidential primaries. And he alluded to the same claim, if you recall, and if I'm allowed to read just briefly. The technical committee was subsequently uh, to submit a report to parties after uh, this had been determined. As I speak with you, our technical system is currently at the party headquarters to undertake this activity. However, despite the assurances given to myself and my team by the chairman of the party, the executives of the party, in an act of complete and unacceptable breach of faith, went ahead to convene a press conference announcing that the elections will go ahead tomorrow. Then this is argument, after Mr. Dufour has tabled his concerns regarding their own register, was that they still believe in the electoral commission and their whole electoral process to be able to run a robust system. So what change? That even your own in, during your own internal elections, you trust the Electoral Commission to be able to administer your system with the same register that the Electoral Commission has compiled on your behalf. Then, on the other side, you make a U-turn and then come and I mean, 
make it look and dramatize like Mr. Wabia Samoa. <laughs> Dr. Dufour, did he raise all these concerns by bring, bringing pictorial evidence, etc.? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Dr. Dr. Dufour raised all these questions. You've but made I, a point but I'm saying Edugy, that they Edugy. did not listen. You, you, you take a look at what the positions are on this table, the responses from Kusi Kwating, and then also you have Yabu Abinia Samoa, as well as other stakeholders. Kofi Abuchi, for example, raises some key questions in there and says that for all his experiences, I mean, having the audit done is not until what? You see, let us all put matters in context. First of all, in 2016, the Electoral Commission was not manned by openly known MPP operative. Today, the Electoral Commission today, in fact, in the year 2020, the person who represented Akufuado at the Coalition of Resort in Bono, Dr. Apiahene, is today a commissioner. Has that ever happened in the history of this country? Charlotte was please, an please, member. Please. She had never been. In fact, Charlotte Ose is you, closer. You have oh, listen to me. Why are you doing this? No, you have Mr. Yes. Please respect no, yourself. You me as no, no, I never did. When you Don't call talking, up my respect please. when you interjected me. I, I brought what it up. What is not, what is not in doubt? is that <laughs> when you have a situation where you appoint openly known MPP operatives, the rules of the game changes. Now you have an IT person. You have 15,000 people whose, whose name is on the transfer list, but you don't know where they were transferred from. Whether from Mars or Jupiter, you don't know. 15,000 people. That 15,000 is enough to gerrymander parliamentary election outcome. 15,000. So effectively what they have done is that they sit at the IT department of the Electoral Commission. And then they look your face, Yabu Abin, Domek, uh, 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 Adenta. Then they'll take your name to Domek Wabinya. So on election day, when you go to Adenta, you'll see your name. And is it think those who Oh, are please. And you have done 15,000. It doesn't matter at this point whether the NDC uh, uh, movement, for change, movement for change people. or anybody. <laughs> and that is, why we, the NDC, and that is the why we are saying that in this audit, there will be an MPP rep, there will be NDC, there will be movement for change, civil society group. What is wrong with that? If you have nothing to hide. Two, you see, Madam Jane Mercer believes that she's a beauty queen above the law. Oh, no, that's not fair. It is. You Please, Sina, calm down. You see, Sina, when I'm talking, listen to me carefully. No, the beauty queen bit is not fair. Is she not beautiful? Yes, but to say... Above the law? <laughs> and you see, the reason is this. When you have a, a, a situation where, for instance, in the Supreme Court election petition, right, a request for her to testify for whatever legal reason is rejected, it gives her an impression that she's above accountability and that she's not accountable for her work. Meaning what? You saw what happened. Where clearly she admitted that there were errors in the declaration and the computation of Form 13. When you have all those situations and the court says no, go, it creates a certain sense in the person that she's above accountability. Look, I tell you this, on this platform, my brother here says, oh, but NDC had not provided a single, in fact, you use the word single evidence. So on what basis did the Electoral Commission suspend its director for Pusiga? Was it not on the basis of evidence? The MPP can defend Charlotte Osei, Apiahini, Bosman Asari, and co. But remember that the MPP is not the only Stakeholder in our election. What do you mean? By the, Listen, you the mean, MPP. You mean Jane Mensa, not Charlotte. Oh, sorry, Jane Mensa. Okay. The MPP continual support for this current electoral commission. What it does is that it undermines our constitutional arrangement. How so? I have no problem if you assert the independence of the commission. Fair, but that independence is not independence to account or to subject yourself to an audit. Why are we even talking about this audit? Are you checking his time? Because, because I love interjections. Because, because, because ultimately, Please I was in that. this country. My own brother, David Asante, 
He used to lead, let my vote count. The MPP organized a demo when they wanted a new register. In fact, Akufado led that demonstration. They were, they were dramatizing, correct? Was it that drama? No, but still, it's, please, they, was they it drama? So when, 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 when a political party undertakes a serious activity like demo, and you call it drama, then you do not understand what our constitution. I want to make the point here clear that it is the current constitution of the Electoral Commission that has made it successful to suspicion. Because you have a known IT person like Apiahini, Yakwachi, mm. and co handling the Electoral Commission IT system. And you say there shouldn't be an audit. Let's do the audit. No so the demo is coming on? In fact, All right. we are ready. And we have written to yeah, the well, police. What do you make of it? Let me just give you five minutes on this, what, with all due respect. Yes, yes, yes. If you can even let, take four minutes, it will be better. Let nobody discount the value of demonstrations and agitations over the years. Mm -hmm. Because they've contributed to the improvement. So this one too will contribute? They've contributed so far to the improvement of the processes of elections in Ghana. We are in a process. And there's a demonstration asking for a particular thing. The way the EC handles it determines whether or not there is value addition or subtraction. What do you make of the way the EC has been handling this I, so far? I think so far, the approach, the resort to the known means, oh, there's been an exhibition. It's not enough. Because many, how many people go to look at their names in the exhibition? It's not the EC's fault that nobody patronizes, or very few people patronize the exhibition. So the exhibition is not resilient enough to make the corrections. Two, the pub press conference approach is poor. This business about responding to each other in the press conference, and, and Mr. Kwati has just waved the MP, NDC's air. Uh, but it was it, done before. What's wrong now? Yeah, but, but what I'm, it, society evolves. This EC has a wonderful opportunity to continue to expand the remit of the EC and create a situation where more stakeholders are brought into its fold, moving beyond MPP and DC. So I'm saying that the way forward on this one, the way I see it, whether the NDC goes on demonstration or not, there must be a resolution. The EC shouldn't feel that uh, they are being pressured to do what is not in their mandate. And the NDC shouldn't be made to feel that it is because of the demonstration that the EC will work for them. What the EC should do is bring stakeholders together and establish the ambit of this audit. What is supposed to go into the audit? Yes, Once we agree on the ambit, let everybody, every stakeholder in this election, including the Peace Council, if they want to be part of the process, sit in and have that audit done. What I will not accept is an audit by an accounting firm. I don't think that's what is required. You don't think they are a I don't think that's what that's is required. A, that, 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 I, I, think, I, think, I think what is required yeah, it's not, I don't think, it, it shouldn't be an audit by an audit. Okay. I, think, no, it, I think it, it should be a sit down, it should be a sit down between the EC. So let's agree, please, let's agree to the audit. No, let's agree to the audit. No, 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 Alain Chamatin, when he becomes Please, president, will get rid of winner takes all. Please, and we'll stop all this uh, bickering <laughs> for nothing. Okay. Everybody will be involved. Please go ahead. <laughs> so the EC should. So you I, I don't think, want an independent auditor. I, I think, in my opinion, <laughs> immediately, the EC should call a meeting of all stakeholders, the major parties, the major independents, or everybody mm. who has nominated or submitted a form to be part of this election. And agree on the parameters of an audit, and then execute that audit. And that is what will bring the temperatures down. I mean, Just four minutes on yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll end by saying that the EC should be given the, the opportunity or the chance to be able to fix the discrepancies that has been identified. Uh, particularly when, even if you look at from 92 up till now, there has not been such an external scope of audit as being defined by the NDC where they are looking for even some way, somehow. So you're saying them. the same committee as, cre as created should be done? MPP, the MPP the, crap, the crap committee. International audit of voter The crap committee. No, no, please allow him. No, no I, am, I am saying that it doesn't so matter. It, no, it, it doesn't really matter who makes <laughs> the call. 
okay. whether it's the MPP, the NDC, or even the movement for change. Okay. What is important is that as a people, we should be able to give that discretion or that trust or that power to the electoral commission to be able to use its own internal processes to be able to fix the register. Like you have to build and confidence. Exactly, exactly. Is confidence exactly. And that so you trust the no, 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 I've really made any different point. I've been consistent with what I'm saying, that <clears throat> it depends on which side of the pendulum that you sit. Really? And I have brought, I mean, instances. I even shared with you a video where Mr. Johnson, I said, get here, was <laughs> praising the Electoral Commission for being credible and the fact that they, they should be left to do their work and that the fact that they have their own internal processes to be able to address it, this he discrepancy. Was to the and I, I, no, I, you, see, you see, Mr. Dwood, Mr. Dwood, Mr. Dwood, my, my point is that don't let us create the impression that the voters register are done by a certain mechanical system. It's done by human beings. So obviously, you, you will get some of these discrepancies. It is even the more reason why the law envisages these things that ought to arise. And at the end of the day, also provides remedies for resolving same. We, we cannot bring in, for instance, an external uh, company or auditor like KPMG or Deloitte to come and audit our register. Where, What's wait, wrong wait. With that? You should, give, you should give us precedent. No, you should give us precedent all over the world. Oh, right, Kenya. Let, Kenya. Me go, Kenya. let me go on to oh, Kenya. Galamse. Oh, let me go on to my, my four minutes. My, it looks like it looks like I've, I've not been I've, I've, I've not been treated for because when it, when I'm talking, Mr. Tamakul keeps interjecting. No, no. You said you wanted you wanted a precedent on the fourth of April, 2017. All right. KPMG issued a statement. About all the granted, 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 granted. Roland, I, Roland, let me land. Let me land. I put a video there. I will download it for me. Yeah, Roland, Roland, granted. Granted that ultimately, even if KPMG has to combine efforts with Deloitte to be able to do the auditing exercise, ultimately, who implements the audit uh, 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 findings is not the same electoral yes. commission. So why is it that if you have any issue, any discrepancies that you've identified, you cannot give same to the same electoral UNDP commission to be able funded, to resolve it? UNDP no, funded. why is it that if you now have such inconsistencies, it's not the same electoral commission. A similar audit in 2015. No, I am saying that. I am saying case. that. If so you believe in your own system, you want stream. to parade Ghanaians. You, you want to Thomas parade Ghanaians. You want to parade Ghanaians to be on the What are you, General Secretary, for the Ghana National Association of Teachers? We know the organized labor. They come out with a position. A thief. That what government by of? September 30 needs to <laughs> one declare a state of emergency because of the nature of our water bodies, massive distraction because of Galamse, also raising issues about how um, politically tainted stakeholders, as well as even officials in government, so to speak, in recourse to all that has been raised by Professor Frimpombwate, etc., are key participants in Galamse. Now, organized labor, Thomas Musa, General Secretary Nat, you still insist that September 30, because we know that the ministry that has oversight responsibility has now come out with an interministerial committee. So that should resolve your concerns. You should be relaxed. Everything is under control, Thomas Musa. Please unmute. Yes, I have already done, done so. Okay, Can you please. hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Good. Good morning to your good self, the panelists, and all the viewers this morning, and all Ghanaians. I say good morning. Uh, Roland, for some time now, we are. Mr. Musa, I would want you to go back or take your screen a, a bit back so that I can get you better. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Talk. Is that okay? Yeah, fine. Good. What we're saying is this. Currently, we are between life and death. That is where we are. And I repeat, we are between life and death. Roland, before I start, on Saturday, I went to do it. I even want, because I had a program, I needed to do a presentation somewhere. So I went to do it to fetch the water. And that is bring water with me. Wow. I hope you can see. Wow. Yes. You can use that in brewing. River brewing yesterday on Saturday. I was there myself to fetch it. I went to a union to fetch it. That is river brewing. I see. That is the state. And within the week, I will go to Pra and other areas to go Pra and other areas and fetch the rest of the rivers where we have them. 
Roland, like I have told you, we are between life and death. And to the extent that we are between life and death, we do things that will give us life. If we take that and say it's taking death, but if we choose our water bodies to stand with our water bodies, then we're taking life. We have decided to take the path of life. And whatever we can do to survive, we will get it done. And that is why we are saying that we're giving the president up to the ending of this month, that is September, to declare, number one, the state of emergency. Number two, revoke the NI, giving people the mandate to go into our forest reserves. Number three, establish a Galamse court so that all those involved in, the, in, in Galamse destroying our water bodies should be punished severely. Then the last one, the equipment and all the things that are in those areas should be withdrawn. Then the military and the police should be given free hand to protect life and property. Don't forget, the police will always tell, tell us that their duty is to protect life and property. The question is, are the police people in Ghana, the water bodies, are they not part of the properties of Ghana? Mm. Are they, why are they not protecting it? So that is what we are saying at this moment. So 30th of September is the deadline, and we stand by it, my brother Roland. Um, so the ministry... Or oh, there is an inter-ministerial committee that has been announced by the ministry. Of course, I'm sure it's coming from the president who has given um, those powers to that inter-ministerial committee. That should halt your demands, even though you say you are still going ahead, right? The issue is this. The, the issue at stake now is not a ministerial matter. The what it what will, matter it is will, it? It, will, it is a presidential matter. And that it, it is not for nothing that as the protected one is found in an is found in a found in Ghana's constitution. There is a reason. There is a reason why the emergency powers in the constitution were given to the president and not the minister. Because we are talking about the essentials of life of the people who have been threatened. We are talking about existential threats here. And the other one, we are talking about the risk or the security of the people of Ghana. That is what we are talking about. So this matter is, a, is about that ministerial committee. It's about them. In any case, Roland, we have seen many committees. We have seen Operation Vanguard. We have seen Operation Galamstock. Mention them. What, what came out of them? It was during the same operation that I am not reminding any family particularly the late um, uh, Mohammed family, I'm not reminded of anything, that we lost that gallant soldier. Today, the lady is a widow, and the children are fatherless. There are many deaths of school children, pregnant women, and all that. Time will not permit us to talk about them. This thing happened for the past seven years. Where we are now, committee, no, never again. We are saying that, I'm coming. Even if on the scale of preference, constituting a committee should not be the first thing. The first thing to be done, we can take it that constitu constituting a committee is government input, fine. But on the scale of preference, con the constitution of the committee will not occupy on the top, will not occupy the top spot. Number one should be state of emergency. Number two, because that is the that power has been entrusted into the hands of the president. And that is why we are saying that where we've gotten to now is a presidential matter. And therefore, the president must invoke that emergency powers so that to save us from death. Because I've already told you we are between death and life. The other one, too, is that we revoke the MI, we revoke the MI mandating them, uh, mandating, uh, uh, what do you call it, mining in our forest reserve and establishment of the course. This state. The best thing that can get you down easily is the president. Roland, let me tell you something. As we speak now, the ministers that sit on that particular committee, they will be going to their constituencies to go and campaign. Honorable Jinapo will soon be going to the northern region to go and campaign for his seat. Uh, my old friend, Honorable Ignatius de Bapewa, will also be going to his constituency to go and campaign. Honorable Nitiwu, defense minister, who also be going to his constituency to go and campaign. 
I can tell you, they will not have time to do anything about this particular thing. So we insist that the committee, the constitution of the committee cannot be the first thing. On the scale of preference, it should occupy on the 10th or the 11th position. But the first thing now on the scale of preference should be the state of emergency, establishment of the courts, court, revoking the AI, and then giving the military and the police the free hand to deal decisively okay. for all, for all, again, or to deal decisively with all those who are destroying our water bodies and pull out all the equipment from, the, uh, from our forest reserve. These are the things okay. that occupy the topmost position. And these are the things we are talking about. O organized labor. If by September 30, the president it looks like this is going to be his position or his way to resolve this, what will happen? My brother, when we were in the elementary school, the Lord's Prayer says that, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I believe that nobody will lead us into temptation. But if in the course of this month, our demands are not heeded to, Roland, believe you me, organized labor will once again write to the vocation. I tell you, we will deliver. What, we what do you mean by you deliver? Oh, we have indicated it. You guys are on the table. Demonstration is on the table. Nationwide strike is on the table. And all other things are on the table. And we will deliver the, the whole of organized labor. I am telling you, believe you me. Who is leading you into temptation? We are saying that there are duty bearers. And the duty bearers, we are telling them the time to act is now. Okay. The time to act is now. The constitution, the emergency powers in the constitution have been entrusted into the hands of our president. And we are saying that our president should save us these days from death. We are confronted with, with, with death, and we refuse to die. And that is exactly what we are saying. That, uh, Mr. President, you have the emergency powers in your hands by Article 31. Your people are dying. Pregnant women are, are having miscarriages, deformities, delay in language. Look, no, time will not permit me. Let me give you some few statistics. Roland, you will not believe it. Currently, in fact, 880,000 children are probably are born every year. Roland, take note of these statistics. Per our own statistics, approximately 880,000 children are born every year. Roland, the question is, what water are they coming to drink? Number two, children between the ages of 5 to 17 years, 21% of them are into child labor. Because of the galamse, they are all going into, uh, 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 going into that particular activity. Now, to put it in figure 10, for you to understand, out of every five children you see, one is into child labor. And the unfortunate aspect of this particular issue is that the four that have been coming to school, they are all now stopping because they will have to go long distances and go and look for water. And so when they go, they don't come to school again. And a significant number of them are going into the Galamse activities. You will not believe it. In one of the schools that we went, out of the 30 students that are going to write the BEC, only 12 of them are in the classroom. 16, 18 of them are into Galamse because they don't see the need to go to school again. Rola, is that what we want? Okay. The World Bank country report has already told us in 2018, that is based upon the Human Capital Index report, that look, if we do not do anything, about the quality of our education. 56% of our, of, our, of our human resource will go away in the next 80 years. Roland, is that what we want? Is that what we want? Do we want to see again? Can they bury water? Roland, I am showing it to you again. Do we want to see before we act? All right. Thank you, Thomas Musa. How many bottles of the bearing water do you have? I'm because I've told you within the week, we will, I will go back again and go, and this time I am going to all the rivers. Because look, we want, look, when I, I showed this one to somebody yesterday, the person was telling Thomas, are you sure that is the beauty? I said, no, go to Enginev. Go to Enginev. On your way to Kumasi, go to Enginev and go and see it for yourself. All right. Thomas Musa, right. General Secretary, um, not representing organized labor, part of the signatories to that statement. And, uh, well... 
You want to respond to me? Yeah, yeah sure. Just sure, sure. two minutes of this, please. Yeah. Even I mean, though this I mean, organized labor Yeah, yeah sure, sure, You sure. said the yeah. demonstration or they, they resort to other means. Uh, uh, but I mean, before that, these guys have failed to mobilize their people to explain the 24 hour economy and they want to uh, mobilize them to go on the streets. Anyway, we are just looking forward to that. Uh, but I mean, on the Galamse subjects, I, I, I acknowledge that it's a very complex subject. Which constituency do you come from? From Asante Atim North. Do we have Galamse there? They are busily digging. Asante, they are busily digging in digging. Asante Atim North. I, no, no, I think it's rather central that has the economy yeah. that has that challenge. Oh, we feel, we feel, we feel, we feel, why can't you say it? It's okay, it's okay. Two minutes. You, let's give him two minutes. That's the Galamse house. No, please, you know it. Mr. Bamiyasa, why are you not my person? He asked me a question. I'm two minutes. I don't want two minutes. We actually filmed roadside. Um, Galamse taking place, and we're told that even government officials just passed there to phone us every day and they do nothing. No, I'm about saying it. that it's a very difficult subject, and for me, I will maintain that it's not only uh, a, a law enforcement issue, but it goes beyond that. Uh, if you ask me, there is some economic, social, and cultural undertones, and so such discussions obviously it becomes quite difficult to have. And it's even the more reason why I've always maintained that at every point we our uh, discussions will have to be multi-faceted in the context that if you are having or discussing this subject, it does not necessarily have to be political. Other than that, we may be losing the fight ultimately. But of course, if at the end of the day, we are having a discussion on the Galamse and you have politically exposed persons, for instance, coming out to say that our grant or Galamse is imprisoned under the for amnesty, it becomes very difficult to be able to fight it, particularly when you are a political party and such comments from a political leader like Mr. Mahama, some way somehow affects your political or electoral fortunes. It becomes very difficult to, to address them. So for me, my, my point is that it's an issue that has to be devoid of politics. Of course, as a people, I mean, the fight against Galamse, like I indicated, or I always say, is not an event, it's a process. You may have some peaks and valleys, ups and downs. There will be successes and failures. But ultimately, if you ask me, it requires a more extensive and uh, broader a political approach to be able to uh, address it. Uh, because, like I indicated, it's, it's not only an issue of general non-performance when it comes to the enforcement of our laws, but you, you have, I mean, economic ties linked to it, you have social ties linked to it, you have some cultural ties linked to it. So for me, the last thing I will see, I want to see on this whole uh, Galamse conversation is, is politicizing it. And we we'll need everybody's effort. Uh, we we'll need more stakeholder engagement. We we'll need more collaboration. Uh, because, I mean, I was doing some reading last night. It even pre exists even the pre colonial time. And it shows that, yes, the non enforcement bit. So you agree that Galamse has been with us? Uh, yes, that's, that's what I'm the, saying. That it and requires the multi. have not been like this. Yes, so the responsibility should be with government. And the blame, yeah, ultimate, because of the state of the water, should be. Put on government. Yeah, ultimately. And the government is led by the president and his vice president. No, ultimately, ultimately, the government will take the final responsibility in terms of even the fight or leading the fight. Of course, there has been several interventions, as you and I know. There has been Gallam Stop, there has been Operation Vanguard and what have you. But of course, even recently recall the Operation Gallam Stop and Vanguard, there were people that were arrested as part of the law enforcement mechanisms. What was the response of our friends in the NDC? that when they come, they are going to allow it. That when they come, they are going to uh, give grant amnesties to those who have been in prison. So it makes it quite difficult for, for the fight. And who dare them to state their position on... I don't understand. The then saying. this is the cause of the situation no, where I, we have polluted... No, no I, I am saying So that, what are you saying? I am saying that in a political mm -hmm. environment like this, and of course a political discussion like this, the context should also not be taken out. That... There, are, there, there will be some political interpretations that will be okay, placed on it. And I'm saying that such political interpretations should be, I mean, I mean, th this conversation should be devoid of such political interpretations. Other than that, we may be losing the excess. I think, I think uh, <clears throat> what Ghanaians need now is to declare a state of emergency on the MPP. The MPP must go. Because a vote for the MPP will be to establish further impunity. Look, as we speak, the fourth estate, had put out there that the uh, Kumasi mayor, Sampai, has registered a company called Sam and Jan and has applied 
for a mining, you know, permit to what go is, and oh, please, what is illegal to about go that? and mine in a forest reserve. That level of impunity, I've never seen it before. But that's aside. Nanado Danko Kufado set up a 10-member interministerial committee. The result is disaster. Five, 10 member could not do. Now you want a five-member committee. And like Thomas Musa rightly pointed out, of these five, only one is not contesting for parliamentary election. Kandapa. The rest are all. In fact, as at yesterday, uh, my learned senior Abu Jinapo was in his constituency, Damongo, with the finance minister. He has no time for this Galamche matter. The president is shaking his overall responsibility. I've just read that Galamche is now even causing impotency. I just read online, Dr. Pobi, making the point. Now women, they go to give birth, and the kids come without their genitals. What is your solution? Please, 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 please. <laughs> the current crop of Akufuado and his people, mm -hmm. and in the Free Pong Watching Report, he said the Jubilee House is the hub of Galamse, the headquarters of Galamse. What is then this position on Galamse? What is then this position? Tell us this position. First of all, do you admit that your government is so complicit in this Galamse activity, and the worst of it is when I heard that Dr. Baumia had appointed Mrekuduka to lead the fight against Galamse. Mrekuduka. What has he done to you? La, 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 la. When you go to Takwa and you mention a known Galamse, yes, the whispers have it. And you appoint such a person. Look, it's a complete I think, I think you should separate Galamse from small scale mining. No, I, small I, I scale am, mining no, in this I country is not illegal. I know, it's not, I know, it's not illegal. I know Galamse. So if a political is a small person, that owns a company that does small scale mining. Oh, so he, anyway, anyway, you gave me see, two minutes. He has cost three minutes. As we speak, you gave me two minutes. He's more than two minutes. No, 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 I didn't. Look, as we speak, as we speak. Then he should proceed. You can even give him Let me just conclude. After this is TV3. Let me conclude on this. We have gotten to a point. And like Thomas Musa said, it's a matter of life and death. And in those instances, you expect the president to show leadership. You've asked what is the NDC's alternative. Look, when you are taking food from a man, you must provide him an alternative livelihood. The NDC has the record of providing alternative livelihood for persons that were taken. In planting of trees, among other things, these are very fab. In fact, when you go to Ethiopia, they were able to regenerate the environment with two billion trees. It is doable here. But they're already planting trees. Yeah, we can oh, this but look, it has failed. The record is that it has failed. <clears throat> so in concluding on this matter of small yeah, scale, I would just say that President Nana Dodan Kufuado must declare a state of emergency unto himself you did five minutes. because his leadership has doing. been completely shambolic and he should the not be yeah, permitted. Please. Where's the, beauty, mine? Lawyer. the beauty of when Alam becomes president is that these two parties who are afraid of losing power will all be part of power. We'll get rid of winner takes all. That's okay. the beauty. So they'll be part of, of the movement for change government? The union, yes. Okay. Ah, means that are you from Abugo? No, no, no. Is it from Abugo? Please, 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 no, no. please, 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 the, the new ad hoc ministerial committee is useless. So you want to be on the committee? It yes. is useless like because it, quite, it will not achieve anything. <laughs> because with three months to go, the president has to be more pragmatic. We did. This Let's matter this, we that Im Singh could not deal with cannot be dealt with by five member ministerial committee with three months <laughs> to go. No, 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 no. So at least I expose you. the president <laughs> should do one tangible thing. He should have the LI repealed. The airline, which is allowing prospecting and digging in forest reserves and around river bodies, that selective airline is not, they are not capable of policing it. You are saying we are here because of the airline? It, it should be, no, not just the airline, but that's the first step. It should be repealed immediately. That's something concrete the president can do. 
Another thing the president can do is that he should stop them issuing new licenses. He should stop, the third thing is that he should stop new excavators going from Tema into the bush. These are initial measures that will take the politically exposed people out of the equation very quickly. I agree. Once you take the politically exposed people out of the equation, you can do some basic minimum immediate enforcement so that other responsible people, after three months when Alan is in charge, he can implement <laughs> measures that will cure this thing it's once it's and for all. <laughs> Otherwise, as we sit here, either the president is not aware of the devastating effects enough, or he doesn't care, or worse of all, he's complicit. He is beneficiary. Mm. He is aware of those who are beneficiary, and therefore, he does not want to muddy the water. Well, 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 even before the coming of the ally, and subsequently since the coming to force of this ally, well, we've seen that pre-2017, 58 licenses given, and now we have in excess over 1,000. And even over the last week or two, still approvals made. Exactly. That is scary. It is dangerous. That's why I'm over saying a thousand... that. That's why I'm saying that if this goes on, the perception would be that the president, the president is complicit. Is it a perception? But if you have a thousand, opposition over a thousand an ally. licenses being given, <laughs> yes. and an ally which is facilitating the abuse of those licenses, an and you have a ministry that is not enforcing anything, then the entire machinery, which is supposed to protect us from ourselves, is complicit in it. That means the president is falling down on the job. Do we need a state of emergency? I think the president should take pragmatic measures. Because even if you declare state you are of massaging emergency, or no, that's no, your position. No. Let, me, let me explain. <laughs> the mere pronouncement of a state of emergency does not solve the problem. And it, it when you, them when you, the when you pronounce a state of emergency, there are measures that you have to take. The water body. Under the state of emergency. And there, you may send military people in there. And the military people go in there to protect All right. politically exposed uh, 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 concessions, or they are going to be fair to everybody. Now what they do is that they go in there, protect politically exposed people who own concessions, and then try and drive out others who are not politically connected. A, a mere declaration of a state of emergency will not stop that. I am saying that pragmatic measures, mm. stop issuing the licenses. Stop any new excavators from leaving Temaport into the bush. Repeal the ally. Then you give yourself some space to begin to enforce and throw out the people Roland, who are mismanaging Roland, themselves. Um, Roland, the, let me say good morning no, Roland, to Roland. Sahinaza no, Mustafa, no, Rena Awene. Um, Alan has you, know, you know the Asante Dr. Dr. Carl Domeno, who lives yeah, in no, North no, Carolina, no, Charlotte, no, Charlotte no, specifically. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? Yes. Look, the Asante Regional Minister yes. is advising DCs not, not to use their drill use equipment the, the, for mining, for, mining. for Galante. For, <laughs> yes. That is what the situation has got to do. It's okay. And you are here saying there, what? There's something about the and difference you call between Kuduka legal to mining Galante. and illegal mining. Don't insult the You have a license yes. to mine legal. But when you get into the... Bush, you the do you have a concession? The do you know people who have concessions uh, no, I mean, are poor? Well, I, 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 was oh, for, no. I was waiting for you to ask me a question. Before I speak, <laughs> you say I'm interrupting. <laughs> and you keeps <laughs> making comments <laughs> in Mr. Barbara Samuel's submission. <laughs> you never saw interjection with him. I don't, I don't own a concession. I mean, on principle, um, I'm not a miner. But you see, I think... But you, you I, know so many people. Politically exposed no. people, they are not miners. <laughs> they are benefiting no. from... They are sponsored. They are sponsored. Roland, I'm coming. Roland, you, you, they, Roland, they, you they may mention on the line. They buy import the escalators with Tema. Roland, let's get this clear. Mr. Abraham on the floor. Mr. Abraham on the floor. You see, it's good to have a proper license in a regulation regime than the regime that do not have licenses. So we should just give hosting licenses? No, 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 licenses. I'm saying that, of course, licenses... Is that not the cost of no, all this? licensing has to be complemented with, I mean, an enforcement effort. That I agree. But like I earlier indicated, it is not only an enforcement issue. Go to it goes beyond that. I am daring you. I am daring Barricade you to Sida. state your position on... Step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, you have to dial star 446 hash Pick the range of the numbers 1 to 39 
and win 20 times, 400 times, and 40 times your stake, and win cash every evening at 7 p.m. And when it's on Sunday, 6 p.m. Early bets, they also love Dewa Chop Money at 10 a.m. There's a draw. Use the range of the numbers 1 to 39. You win same uh, multiple times. 1 to 39 being the range of the numbers you have to use. Just in case you want to play online, go to dewa-nla.com or dial again star 446 hash. Let me say good morning to a number of you. And um, well, patience. Uh, Tima, good morning to you. You are with um, the MPP constituency chapter of. Um, okay, Equiapim North specifically. I wish you a good morning as well. And all those who have been. To my brother, Bill Bogle. No, okay. Happy, happy. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. Thank you all for coming, right? Kwesi Kwating.